somebody who could inspire people to the extent I have seen here, my daughter as well as so many other children. All that I want to make is to make a plea. I don't know the details of the case, but don't lose such an inspiring teacher over what in the long run is a minor amount. That's all. Thank you. for all the years I've been at Ridge, and I'm a junior now. And so coming into Ridge, I kind of had a similar experience as someone who spoke, where they hated French and wanted to change it. And it was really a class that I dreaded, and I hated it, and I wanted nothing to do with it. <laughs> um, and so like, I went into Ridge with that like attitude, and but now I'm like now I'm in French culture and I love it and I'm and I had always planned on like taking a totally different language senior year but now I'm doing French culture too and cuz it's like she makes it a really fun and interesting class and it's and it's a class where I've learned that there are people in other countries that have not even like a fourth or like an 18th of like what we have and they're going out and doing stuff and making a life for themselves. So it's like, if they can do that, like we definitely can. And like, that's something really important I've learned from this class and just, I think opening your mind and learning about different cultures is really important. Like, I feel like it's a class that kind of everyone should take because it just, it sets you up for, it sets you up for seeing different cultures and different people and different ways of life, and I think that's really important. Yeah. Hi guys, my name is Alina Akram. I live on 227 Patriot Hill Drive. So, in eighth grade, when we had our scheduling meetings, I had asked Chloe, I was like, what language should I take? And she said, don't take French. And I was like, girl, why? And she was like, because it's so hard. And yeah, I still signed up for it. And so when I came here, I had Miss Goslin, and so, she was a teacher, she was a teacher that was like no other. So obviously as a freshman in Ridge High School, you don't know what to expect, but obviously I really did not know what to expect from Ms. Goslin. So we had these orals where we had to like, you know, go up in front of the whole class. And obviously I was scared, I was a little freshman, I didn't know what to do, and my friend wasn't the best. So what I noticed about her is that she would accommodate to every um every student's learning style. So she knew that I wasn't really good at orals. So every time I had one, she would let me work by myself and then I would do them with her, rather not in front of the whole class, but outside. So Ridge opened up in September 1961, if I'm correct, Wikipedia told me. So that's been about 58 years. Now, throughout our whole life at Ridge, I'm a junior now, by the way, you guys tell us to succeed, and you know, there's all these like models and logos, and we can tell all the trophies lining up and all of the pledges on the wall. But yeah, when students saw what was happening in this whole situation, it showed us that what example were you guys putting out for us? You know, we were so like determined to find success, but when a teacher finally broke that out of the classroom like setting, we realized what is she like? What, what example is this? And so she taught us how to get over challenges such as when certain snow days weren't called and our car was stuck for hours. But you know, that's the type of teacher she is and I knew with her mentality, I had grown into and I had the same mentality. And so what I'd like to say is she is not just another asset, she is not just another teacher, she is definitely not a number, but she is a mentor and we all can say that we all love her. Thank you. Hi, my name is Trisha Carr. I live on 169 South Finley Avenue. Um, I wrote a letter to the board earlier uh, for Madam Goslin, and I'm not sure if it was read, but I would like to read part of it. Um, I've taken six years of French, and I've had Madam Goslin for two years now, and she is definitely my favorite. <laughs> 
because she not only taught me that like education is more than just a textbook, she taught me how to toughen up because I was not tough. <laughs> and she really taught me how to get out there and be myself. Um, and I find myself excited to go to her class every day. She has taught us that travel is the best form of education, and she has endless travel experiences that have not only made her a better teacher, but has created a love for learning in all of her students. The best lessons involve stories and pictures of her own trips, and every trip she embarks on is just another learning experience for both her and us. It is very important to her students that she is well-traveled because we get an inside look on these different countries and their cultures, which is one of the classes we take. Not only do we feel she is deserving of the trip she went on, her students wholeheartedly feel we can learn and we did learn about her trip. We understand the voyages Madame Gosling goes on are not a vacation because she is not one for taking luxuries. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dawn Weehy and I live at 49 Beachwood Road. And I'd just like to thank whoever it was that hired Ms. Goslin, because whoever it was was thinking outside the box. And I've known her for four years now and I remember meeting her the first time I went to parent-teacher night and she was intimidating. She was a little different than any of the other teachers. Um, but there are a lot of teachers at Ridge that don't just fly in the center. Uh, and I think that's what makes it interesting. And sometimes that can be uncomfortable. Sometimes they are a little bit different in how they converse, just like any other student or any other person who lives in this world. And I think it's exciting for the kids to get to be around someone who isn't like everybody else, that does the unexpected. And that's not just when it's inside the classroom, it's when it's outside the classroom. Um, so regardless, regardless of whatever is the outcome, I think that she has always shown her students to follow their hearts and their dreams. Um, and she's taught the parents a lot too. And I'd just like to say that if I was ever stranded on a deserted island, <laughs> that's the woman I want with me. Thank you. Um, my name is Katie, uh, Katie Gallo. Um, I didn't prepare this beforehand, I just wrote this because I was so inspired by what the rest of the students said. Um, so the first day of school in French class, Madame Goslin actually scared me a little bit. Um, I was intimidated by her talking style, the way she holds herself, the way she thinks. What I have to share with you may seem insignificant, but it means the world to me. I've always liked the idea of speaking French and living in France, but I never got to the point where I felt comfortable speaking in French. For most classes, for me at least, it's a 40-minute block where you learn the assigned material and then you leave. Madame Goslin's class stays with me every hour of my day. When I go home after a long day, I think over how my day has been. I think over my day first in English, because of Madame, and because of Madame Goslin's class, I automatically translate everything I say, do, and think in French. Not because I have to, but because I want to. Madame Goslin has told our class that her goal for us is to become fluent by senior year among the many other goals and life lessons she has taught us beyond the French curriculum. Her classroom feels like home and I feel at ease presenting dialogues in another language. And I think it's extraordinary that she's done all of that in my life in less than one school year. Hi everyone, I'm Mena Magoob and I live on 98 Canterbury Way. I also didn't prepare this beforehand, and I wanted to say that I hate public speaking, but I would will speak because I love Madame Goslin so much, and she has made such a great impact on my life. And I've never been to a board meeting before, and I'm a senior in high school, but I felt the need to come out here and support her because she's such an amazing woman. My story is very similar to Iman's. Like Iman, I moved here freshman year 
from a town called Fort Lee in Bergen County, New Jersey, and the level of rigor in my old school was really uncomparable compared to the rigor here at Ridge High School. And this is quite a personal story, but I struggled so much freshman year academically transitioning to Ridge. I had C's in all my classes and none of my teachers seemed to care. I even remember my algebra teacher and all my other teachers would see me struggling and one day my algebra teacher came up to me and she was like, Mena, if you don't understand this, I can't help you. You really shouldn't be in this class. But Madame was not like that. Although I struggled, she would have me come in during her lunch periods on her own free time and she would help me. She cared about me so much and she set me up with a student tutor who helped me bring up my C to a B plus. And then sophomore year, I did so well. I had an A average. And then I had her again junior year and she continued to make an impact on my life. And it hurts to see the board degrading members of our staff that have just made such an impact on like my life. And like Madame means so much to me because she's not like any other teacher. She, she cares. I don't have her unfortunately senior year because I didn't have room in my schedule for French, but even when she sees me, I could tell that she cares so much about me. She asks me about my colleges, and I've never felt a teacher so caring as much as Madame, and it would hurt if the board does not give her the rights that she deserves. Thank you. Is there anyone else for public comment on agenda items? No? Okay, so at this point, I'll close public comment. Go ahead, go now. Okay, Mr. Markarian's gonna respond to some of the comments. If you guys wanna so, stay for a second. You know, actually, may I say something first? Yeah. Sure. I, I, I just wanted to point out that I, I gave a little speech at the beginning of the meeting talking about the fact that the board doesn't normally comment on uh, personnel matters at public meetings and it basically is not able to. However, tonight is, is an exception to that because uh, the staff member, when a staff member uh, is informed that there's an item on the agenda that may relate to their employment, they have the right to request that any discussion related to that at item be conducted in public rather than during executive session or closed session where it, it wouldn't be public, the comments and discussion. And uh, so tonight we happen to have one of those situations where there is a, an item that there's been a lot of public comment tonight in which the staff member has actually specifically requested that any discussion from the Board of Administration regarding that item take place in public. So that's why this is an exception to the general rule I <coughs> stated earlier, which is that the Board cannot typically comment on uh, staff items. So uh, thank you for that explanation, Mr. Crute. Uh, for the reason that uh, Mr. Crute just described, we normally would not uh, get involved in any discussion of personnel matters. Uh, but given the, the number of students that came out tonight, uh, I, I personally feel compelled to just respond a little bit uh, and, and perhaps help you understand a little bit about the situation that you came to speak about tonight. Because most of you spoke at length about um, your teacher, how much you like your teacher, how much you respect your teacher, how inspired you are by your teacher. Uh, how your teacher uh, has gone uh, out of her way for you and made you feel uh, valued uh, and done some special things for you and uh, treated you uh, with a lot of respect and, and um, really uh, exemplified what we would want our teachers to do for our students. So I'm extremely pleased to hear that feedback and, and I'd like to think that um, lots of teachers would get uh, feedback like that in a similar situation. However, I, um, I just want you to understand that it, th that's not what this conversation is about um, from the perspective of uh, management. 
it's not about whether or not anyone here thinks your teacher was excellent in the classroom or not. Um, so I, I think that you know the idea that this is somehow an evaluation of classroom performance, I, I think it's off the mark. I'm certainly thrilled to hear that uh, you, you had such great things to say about your classroom experiences, um, but that's really not what this is about. Um, it's not about firing anyone. I don't know if you were um, given that impression. I, I haven't had the chance to talk to you about this. I wasn't given that opportunity until tonight, so I don't really know what you know or what you think you know or what you were told. But I can tell you that we're not talking about firing anyone, and I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. Um, I, I just want to say that from my perspective, this is an operational issue. Um, you know, we, we have rules. Uh, and I think that it's important for you guys to understand that from my perspective, um, you know, we have a disagreement here. Uh, and uh, I've explained that uh, to the board, uh, a disagreement about what's okay. Uh, and, and I don't think that uh, what occurred was okay. And I've explained that to the board. And uh, I don't think it's the right thing to do to set the example that if uh, somebody makes a decision, knowing what the consequences are, that there may be negative consequences, and then they choose to make that choice, um, that there's, there's no response to that would not be setting a good example either. I think that people understand that um, some things are okay, some things aren't, and we need to understand in life that there are consequences to our decisions. And I'm 100% sure that your teacher is well aware of that, and this is a disagreement about whether or not there, perhaps there should or shouldn't be. Um, yeah, I, I mean, um, your board president is, uh, our board president is, <laughs> is reminding me of, of some of the other issues. And, and again, I, I really, um, you know, it's, it, to me, I, I, I hate to, to even have this conversation, honestly, because uh, I, I, I don't like to, to talk about people, much less in public. But I, I think that, you know, <laughs> Operationally, as I tried to explain, from a, a management perspective, things don't happen in a vacuum, right? Um, things don't happen when you're managing an organization with, for, of over 800 employees that, um, you know, you, you can't, you have to recognize that while you do have individuals, you also have an organization. And um, we get lots of requests uh, for people to miss work for a variety of things. And um, we do have an operational need that we can't say yes to all of those things. Um, it, it, it becomes an issue of uh, equity uh, and an issue of who's gonna decide whether one person's passion warrants an approved absence over another person's passion. Um, there's no question, as you've all highlighted, that your French teacher is extremely passionate about uh, her work and about uh, climbing this mountain, as you described. Uh, there's, no, there's no question about that, and I certainly respect that passion. I think everybody uh, here on the, on the stage respects people's passions. Uh, and it's not a lack of respect. I do respect the passion to do that, but there is an organizational need that, that we can't ignore as well. And there are many, many people that have passions of their own who would say, you know, I'd like to, to miss some time to go and, and do what I'm passionate about. Uh, and we, we just can't run the organization that way. So um, I, I do uh, want you to understand that I agree with a lot of what you said with regard to the excellence of Ms. Goslin in the classroom. And it's not about that. Uh, it's really about a, an operational and organizational approach that recognizes the fact that we have hundreds and hundreds of staff that uh, would make very similar requests for their own passions. So I, I'm sorry that we don't see eye to eye on this one. I, I wish that, that we did. But I do want to emphasize that um, I, I have a lot of respect for your teacher, as you do. I, I think uh, very highly of Ms. Goslin's professionalism in the classroom and the passion that she obviously inspires in her students. Uh, but unfortunately, I, I don't think that this is a, a, a winnable position uh, for the board. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Markarian.
Um, we are now up to approval of minutes. There is one item. Would someone like to make a motion? Mrs. Wildridge, would someone like to second? Mrs. Korn? Um, any questions about the minutes or comments? Okay, could we have a roll call, please? Mr. Byrne? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mrs. Gray? Yes. Mr. Salmon? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mrs. Richmond? Yes. Mrs. Korn? Yes. Mrs. Wildridge? Yes. Mrs. McCune? Yes. Madam President? Thank you. Um, we are up to the Finance Committee. There are 18 items. I understand there's an ad addendum. Mm -hmm. Make sure you guys see that. Would someone like to make a motion? Uh, Mrs. White and Mrs. Schaefer? Um, do you want to do a report and then? Yeah, sure. Okay. So Finance met on uh, Monday, February 25th. Um, we got a presentation from Steve Weiser, a senior vice president from Aramark, about some personnel changes uh, within the district on the facilities manager level. Uh, we also got a presentation from Dan Reagan from Arthur Gallagher uh, about workers' compensation insurance and how our premium in the district will be um, increasing uh, and, and kind of the mechanics of how to comp uh, calculate um, workers' compensation insurance premiums. Uh, essentially, our district has been at the lowest possible premium rate for the past 10 years or so, um, but we've had a few incidents in the, in the district that have now increased the premium. Uh, but even, even with this increase, our, 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 uh, our premium is still fairly low for, um, for the state. Um, we got a presentation also from uh, Arthur Gallagher about a, a health insurance um, issue that Horizon um, uh, implements this schedule of rates for coverage outside of New Jersey, so for uh, union members, for administrators and teachers. Um, uh, their Horizon replaces this schedule, so it is actually lowering the, the cost um, for, for uh, members to go out of, out of state for um, services. Um, we talked about some legislation that um, was pending in the New Jersey legislature, um, and um, let's see, for um, facilities, we talked about working with policy about outside groups using Ridge uh, facilities to make client pitches, so we're trying to work with the policy committee on figuring out a way to make it um, equitable for all entities that want to use the Ridge facilities, um, but ensuring that they are doing it within the purpose defined by the, the, the district policy. Um, Mr. McLaughlin gave a uh, update on the door project hardware. Uh, the installation for the fire doors was going out to bid in March on March 28th, but we got the bids in. We're actually approving the lowest bid right now um, in, in this. So then the action items for tonight. Does anybody have questions about the minutes from that meeting? We also met last Friday, and I'll be putting those minutes out um, soon. The agenda items for tonight are one through three are standing items. Um, number four is professional development requests for um, SEL-related topics for, for certain teachers and administrators. Uh, number five is for field trips. Number six is a donation from the Ridge Class of 2019 and the Ridge PTO for a sign, which is a large green R on the back brick wall of Ridge. Thank you very much to the class, to the graduating class and the, the uh, PTO for that. Uh, number seven is a donation from the WAMS PTO for the water refill stations. Thank you to the WAMS um, parent organization. Eight and nine are additional services for um, general education students and some home instruction. Items 10 through 13 are special education services. Um, item 14 is um, a, a change order and overrun that went out on the 189 masonry projects that we did in the district. Um, so the company used uh, like $1,000 more in materials than, than was submitted in the bid, so we need a change order to pay that out. Um, number 15 is um, the, related to the, the issue about Horizon replacing that fee schedule um, on the, uh, for out-of-state benefits, for out-of-state services. And then number 16 is to approve the door hardware project. Number 17 in the addendum is professional development. And number 18 uh, is an approval to uh, related to travel expenses that are beyond the district threshold but are deemed necessary and un unavoidable. 
by the district uh, for out of district travel um, by staff. That's it. Anyone have questions? Mr. Byrne. Uh, I'm uh, looking at number, uh, the last one, that uh, 18. It's saying travel expenses of $125,000. Yeah, let me, I'd be happy to speak to that because this is something we just introduced today. So in all fairness, the chair didn't have an opportunity to hear from, from me about it. Uh, every year, the state of New Jersey require us, the boards of education, to set a cap for the ensuing year, a cap, okay? So uh, to put it in perspective, we set that cap high in case something unique comes up. Uh, we've had the same threshold for the last four years. Uh, right now, this year, I checked to see where we're at as of this point for three quarters of the year through, we've spent $46,000. So we set the cap high so that we have flexibility. This is really just a, uh, a regulatory cap that the state of New Jersey by administrative code requires us to set. It also stipulates that uh, any expenditure that's you know, uh, at b below $150 in accordance with uh, state regulation, we don't have to get prior approval on. Because if we did that every time somebody went out, you'd be seeing a list that's, you know, as long as my arm, because a lot of the $46,000 are charges that are below that. So I hope that helps you to put it in perspective. It's not saying that we have a budgeted amount for that, because we don't, okay? It is saying that we're setting the threshold very high in case, you know, something unforeseen came up and you wanted to do something, you wouldn't have to go back and reset this. You could simply authorize a transfer of appropriation to do it but we would have to vote for each one of these. Uh, well, anything that's over 150, just as no, you're no, seeing no, tonight, we to do. 150 or right. 125. Anything and over 100. Each one of these would have to be approved. Right, we separately. don't want to, right, which is, you'd be, yeah. Every time somebody spent 50 bucks to go someplace, we, you'd be looking at it, yeah. We don't so want I to. might want to ask for what the running total is each time we. Uh, well, right now, as I said, this year, at this point good. in the year, it's $46,000. <coughs> okay. Okay, can we have a roll call, please? Sure. Mr. Byrne? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mrs. Gray? Yes. Mr. Salmon? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mrs. Richmond? Yes. Mrs. Korn? Yes. Mrs. Woldridge? Yes. Mrs. McCune? Yes. Madam President? Thank you. Um, we're up to personnel. There's eight items. Would someone like to make a motion? Mr. Salmon, and Mrs. Gray seconded. Um, I'll do the committee report before we vote. Um, the committee met on March 15th. Um, several of the items that we've talked about actually got sort of reported out on at our last board meeting because our board meetings are only a week apart. Um, a couple other things um, that we um, talked about at the personnel meeting was we got an update um, about effective school solutions and how it's going at Ridge. Um, Ms. O'Connell came to give her, um, us some data on how things are going this year. Um, she said that things are, are going really well. Um, she explained some changes that um, effective school solutions made this year based on feedback from last year and said that that's all going very well. Um, th they're providing students with um, intensive counseling who need that. and. Um, she gave us numbers, which was in um, the minutes as far as um, the data on how the students are doing. Um, we then got a um, update about um, work that's being done on the athletic advisor or coaches handbook and the um, advisor handbook for student activities and clubs. Um, and so there are two different projects going on. Um, so um, Mr. Kraus, Mr. Thorpe, and Mr. Syed are working on a club advisor handbook, and at the same time, Mr. Shello and Mr. Markarian, as well as some other people, are working on the athletic handbook and looking at the NJSIAA handbook to uh, make sure that we're looking at all the different things in there um, that we could potentially incorporate into ours. Um, the goal is to get both handbooks ready for the fall. Um, we're going to have um, an update at the next personnel meeting about how that's all going and looking at the handbooks. Um, the handbooks will be posted on the district's website once they're completed, and we'll be reporting out on them before that, obviously. Um, we talked about some other personnel matters. We had uh, got an update about the hiring process for the math supervisor, who we already appointed last week, so you guys all know about that. Um, we talked about staffing requests for next year, which Mr. Markarian talked about last week at the budget presentation. 
And then we got an update on negotiations with the um, teachers. Um, and that was it for the meeting. Does anyone have any questions about the report or about the items on the agenda? No? Any other comments? Okay, could we have a roll call, please? Mr. Byrne? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mrs. Gray? Yes. Mr. Salmon? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mrs. Richmond? Yes. <coughs> Mrs. Korn? Yes. Mrs. Woldridge? Yes. Mrs. McCune? Yes. Madam President? Thank you. Um, we're up to policy. There are how many items? There's a lot. Well, there's two items. There's lots under each one. So can we have a motion for items one to two? Mrs. Korn and Mrs. Waldridge. And do you want me to read the minutes first? Sure. Then, all right. Um, so we met on March 11th, and um, we had a discussion, uh, a couple things. We talked about uh, email response, um, that Mr. Mercari is going to work on language for the student parent handbooks regarding the chain of command and what is appropriate in email communications and response. Um, we talked about uh, Regulation 5530, which is substance abuse. It was revised. Um, um, Ms. Smith is reviewing the policy with the counseling staff and the SACs. Um, and reading through the changes regarding the new reporting system, which is a student safety data system, SSDS, um, Mr. Marcari noticed some of other small differences with our policy and just wanted to make sure the counseling department, wanted to have the counseling department review and recommend if any changes in our policy would be prudent or necessary. Um, there's the um, Regulation 5600, which is Student Code of Conduct, which we had talked about last time when I read out the um, minutes. So the principles are, um, look, it's, it's regarding um, PDA. Everyone knows what that is, I think. Um, the principles are looking over the language of the regulation, just to make sure it um, makes sense in, uh, in all the schools. We're talking about the, um, we want like, definitive language into the regulation addressing public displays of affection in school. And it'll also be added to the student code of conduct handbook. So we're still refining the language. Um, in the policy and regulation 9150, which is school visitors, we had talked about that as well, I think, last time, but I'll go over it again. Um, our school council is reviewing the policy to ensure it can be enforced equally among all different student groups in the district regarding classroom visitors or visits. Because um, it was in light of the importance of student privacy and school security concerns, the following. Um, was added to the policy and regulation, which is being reviewed. All visitors are required to report to a location designated by the principal upon entering the building, and visitors may not photograph, videotape, or record staff and or students without the principal's permission. So we're, they're going over that. Um, there's also um, Lobby Guard is a licensed scanning device that the district will be piloting at Ridge High School this spring um, with the hopes of installing the device permanently in the fall of 2019. A uh, lobby guard can scan a driver's license to make sure the visitors have no offenses that would prohibit them access to a, to a school building. Um, parents will still have access to the school, um, but, we, but will be escorted if um, something shows up with them. Also, other visitors, that if, if their license shows that they shouldn't be in a school, um, will not be permitted to enter. Uh, there's an, this is just an extra layer of safety for the students, teachers, and administrators of the school. Um, so we just wanted to add some language to address how ID scanners will be handled when a school is so equipped. So that was a follow-up to that. Um, the regulation uh, 2624, which is grading system, and regulation 2330, which is homework. Um, the test return policy language and homework policy language were reviewed and accepted at all levels. Um, but these policies are not going to be enacted until September, um, until 2019, till the start of the new school year. And that was how um, we're talking about regarding assessments, the following sections were amended. Um, assessments are returned to students for review, not necessarily to keep, with descriptive and prescriptive feedback that motivates further progress. Um, assessments are returned to and shared with students in a timely fashion. Some summative documents, which are district created, may be filed in the student's portfolio and retained by the teacher. Formative assessments are generally returned to the student for their retention. The decision as to whether a document is given to a student or, 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 or um, to keep lies with the teacher. And regarding the homework, the following language was added. Although it is imperative that parents make every effort to ensure that students attend school every day, in the event of a planned absence, the teacher can use their judgment as to what, would, what work would be appropriate to give the student during the extended absence, as well as deciding what missed work should be completed upon the student's return. 
So for first reading, which is what we're doing today, um, it's a policy 1581, it's called Victim of Domestic or Sexual Violence Leave. It's CUSAC. It's also a law, a state law, right, or I think. So if an employee or an employee's family member is a victim of domestic or sexual abuse, the employee is entitled to 20 days of unpaid leave per 12 months for any treatment or court appearances that are direct result of the abuse. And then we have a whole bunch for second meeting that I had read out in previous um, meetings. So I'm not gonna read those again. It's long. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? No? Okay, could we have a roll call please? Mr. Byrne. Yes, uh, on one, I'm gonna abstain on the second readings. Ms. Schaefer. Yes. Mrs. Gray? Yes. Mr. Salmon? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. <coughs> Mrs. Richmond? Yes. Mrs. Korn? Yes. Mrs. Boldridge? Yes. Mrs. McCune? Yes. Madam President? Thank you. Okay, we're up to the curriculum committee. Um, there's one item. Would someone like to make a motion? Mrs. Woldridge and Mrs. Gray? Um, do you want to go ahead and do the report and then we'll vote? So I'm going to report on exactly what I reported on last week due to the um, difficulties with the sound. Um, we felt like it would be a good idea. So um, the first topic was uh, the updated schedule for program evaluations for all the curricular areas. Ms. Fox reviewed the program evaluation schedule for all content areas. She advised that this is a living, breathing document and by its very nature it changes. The evaluation of a program generally takes about two years. In year one, a committee is convened. The committee represents a cross-section of the curricular area and grade levels. The aim is to bring together four to six teachers. Others are brought in as availability time and budget permits. This group engages in research and discussion. They revisit the prior program evaluation, gather data from comparable districts, look at best practice, and identify strengths and weaknesses. Staff, parents, and students are also surveyed. Preliminary goals are set. Some potential recommendations are considered. Then that group reaches out to the remaining uh, staff teaching that content area. During the second year, the time is spent during department meetings and or K-5 curriculum meetings discussing and uh, research and surveying the re and survey results. Another group is convened to redefine, a uh, refine, pardon me, recommendations and formalize the evaluation report. The next topic was the Senior Experience Memorandum of Agreement, which was approved two board meetings ago with the Township Committee, um, which provides for certain seniors to participate in um, town-related jobs as part of the senior experience. So in that program, there were 54 seniors who expressed interest. 29 actually registered. Uh, 22 are still eligible, and seven are self-designing a program that, um, that they've created, and 15 will be assigned a position based on um, a group of uh, interest areas, including um, information technology, web development, law enforcement, architecture, accounting, interior design, and school-related work, as in our schools. Uh, the students have until March 15th to complete their applications. The next item was the test return policy that uh, Mrs. Korn just went over, so I won't repeat all that. Thank you, Mrs. Korn. Um, we also got an update on uh, the platooning planning for next year. Um, for this year, 2018-19, the four elementary buildings have been piloting different platooning variations in the fifth grade. Principals and teachers from each building met in January to come to an agreement on a unified approach for 2019-20. The group focused their efforts on having uh, basically three tenets drive them. Um, the first one was that homeroom teachers will see students at the beginning and the, the end of every day. The second, that students will work in an uninterrupted block of reading and writing. And the third, that all four buildings will schedule 50 instructional minutes in each content area, math, reading, writing, science, and social studies. 
And um, just as a general goal, um, it, the program will be a platooning program, not a departmentalization program. The team continues to finalize the details and um, they're working, sorry. They continue to finalize the details and uh, work on working within the specific building constraints. The next item was the elementary Spanish program. Efforts have been underway to finalize the plan to introduce Spanish at the elementary level. Ms. Stadler is committed to a quality program that provides instruction for 30 minutes twice a week. The need to share staff across buildings offers some logistical challenges. The Spanish program will begin next year with fourth and fifth graders. Ms. Stadler will be meeting with the elementary principals in March to finalize the plan. The next topic was Honors Algebra 2 and class scheduling specifically. Ms. Bowman reported to the committee on the separate sectioning of 9th and 10th grade Honors Algebra 2. This is the first year that Honors Algebra 2 students were separated by grade. Ms. Bowman reported the midterm grades as of March 6th. Uh, without going through each grouping, suffice it to say that the 9th grade has a lot more um, A's and B's and the 10th grade sections have fewer. Uh, also, there were significantly more dropped students um, in the 10th grade grouping. So 17 students actually dropped, leading 29 10th graders. There was a brief discussion regarding the concern that by March of sophomore year, there are less than 30 students remaining in the honors math path who took algebra in eighth grade. Committee members inquired as to whether there might be a better success rate had the 10th grade Honors Algebra II students received an honors or enriched version of 8th grade algebra. District administrators feel that this may have an impact, but it also may be a function of a student's motivation and ability in mathematics and not a function of whether or not, whether or not they are heterogeneously grouped or homogeneously grouped. This can be reconsidered after the eighth grade math honors algebra course has been implemented when the full implementation of the um, telescoping math program is complete. Uh, we received an English language learners update from Ms. Stotler. She shared that the district now has enough Spanish speaking students that we're required to provide a bilingual program. The threshold for the requirement of a district to have a bilingual program is 20 students of the same language. We would not likely be mandated to institute the bilingual program, but we will need to provide students with two periods of English as a second language instruction per day. Given this has occurred in mid-year, Ms. Stotler will be applying for a waiver from the state for the remainder of this school year. Then we received an update on um, English language arts. In late February, the College Board announced changes to both AP English exams, literature and language. There will be significant changes to AP language and lit for 2020 uh, testing season. Essays will be scored using new rubrics, multiple choice question types will change, there'll be vocabulary and context and identification, and those areas will be updated, as well as there will be new question types included. The changes will necessitate training for six teachers this summer to address these updates. The College Board also announced that there'll be some global changes in AP testing, um, one of which is that registration will now take place in the fall as opposed to the winter. On another note in English language arts, the summer reading selection process implemented last year was a great success and will be followed again this year. Continuing the effort to engage the school community in determining choices, students will cast votes in a March Madness style. They began on March 11th, and the final cho choices will be announced after the third round of voting, which is happening this week. I think lastly, no, there's actually two more, sorry. The health program update. Uh, Mr. Shello joined the committee to address the anticipated changes in the ninth and 10th grade health curriculum. He stated that health staff are working on developing lessons for the three additional weeks of health in 10th grade. This work will continue through the summer. Focus groups are being assembled so that staff can speak with students about their experience. This input will help shape lessons which will focus on drug and alcohol use and abuse as well as suicide prevention. Consideration is being given to some parent focus groups as well and uh, uh, possibly also a Google survey for juniors and seniors sometime after the completion of the third marking period. 
As to grading for the new content, the additional three weeks will be added to the driver's education marking period. Students will receive a grade after 12 weeks are complete. This will function similar to the cycle course grades at WAMS, which also do not follow along marking period lines. And lastly, Project Lead the Way engineering courses for the um, current registration process for students. In order to address the concerns raised by two parents and a group of students at a few board meetings last fall, three former tech ed courses were added to the program of studies. Student requests will dictate which courses will run. In addition, the high school tech ed teachers visited the eighth grade students to provide them with an overview of the course offerings at Ridge and to help them make appropriate requests during scheduling. That's it, our next meeting is a week from Friday, April 5th. Any questions? <laughs> Mrs. Corn? Sorry, yeah. I got it, yeah. Um, it's, it's just tip black tape around it. What, this, I guess? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's working. I, I just had a couple, I, I, I meant to reach out earlier in the weekend, but um, I thought there was a lot of kids the sophomore kids, um, like dropping algebra. <laughs> so that was kind of like a, I don't know. I, and, and it is because they, the thing, the reasoning that because they didn't take it in eighth grade seemed weird to me. Like, I don't know if they shouldn't even have been in the class in the first place. Um, this has been a long standing concern for some people. Um, the only thing I can say is that the kids who were in the ninth grade honors algebra two course had a different algebra because they took it in seventh grade and it's somewhat heterogeneous for the eighth graders in algebra when they take it. So there may or may not be evidence to support that. We're just gonna have to wait okay. and, was, and see what happens. You know, just as like a red flag kind of thing. I don't know, it just- It's not understand. great. No. Um, and then the other thing with the AP now, I'm gonna go out on the record saying I'm not a fan of the College Board at all, not even a little bit, so. And um, do we have a, re did they give us a reason why they're changing all this or, you know, we have to train now six teachers and put more, and then why they why do they have the kids registering in, in, in the fall instead of the spring, like, like so they're gonna take their money early? Mm -hmm. That's great, so now do we have to just roll over for all this stuff? I mean, yeah. I mean why? Uh, that's my question. I mean, if you want the kids to take the AP exams, they have to do it. Their justification is not great. No, it's, it's never great. I hate them. No. I mean, you can write that down on the paper. I don't care. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of the college board. I don't like David Coleman who runs it. I, he's the. It's kind of like a holding hostage situation yeah. if you really think about it, because you don't get a chance to take enough of the course to decide whether or not you really feel comfortable. So can you get your money back? I don't know. No. 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 So you lose like, money, so actually. we can't push anything back on this, like. Like what happens if we just don't do it? Then the kid can't, they they can't take, take the, test. the AP exam. Right. <laughs> well, there are no, <laughs> there are schools that have gone away from AP curriculum, but that's amazing. I mean, right, like, I feel discussion. like we have much better teachers than any AP exam, personally, or AP course. I mean, I just, I'm just throwing it out there. I, I'm just tired of being run over by AP and by the college board just telling us what to do all the time. It just bothers me. But I'm just, you know, so, when it's kind of like um, supply and demand, though. The demand I, I is get there. It. I get it. <laughs> and I know. So people are going to sign up whenever they ask you to sign right. up. Right. And but so they're going to sign up, and if they don't, you know, if, like thirty kids sign up and like ten take the test, they, you know, mm -hmm. they get all their money. They I mean, it just graduate. seems wrong to me. They're going to. And I don't know why people too, are right? They have to more. pay an additional forty. Oh, an additional. If <laughs> if they what? if they change, change their minds money. and register and and change their and decide not to take it. We think that there's an additional $40. I mean, it's a penalty, I mean, an additional I'm penalty for not taking the it? I mean, college you know. board's out there just saying that they want students, sorry. Wow. They want students, it's trying to incentivize. Oh, that's yeah. The word. It's trying to make kids money. to, well, yeah, that. <laughs> but, but their thought is that it'll help kids stay in, in focus with the class and, and continue with the curriculum and finish it off. And this right. isn't in high-performing districts like ours. This is really for other districts. I mean, it's for but everyone. We are stuck I, I know. Too. I know we're not. They're not singling us out. I know that. No, no, no. I mean, they're trying to do this. They think it's better it's for so lower-performing districts. Yeah. And we get dragged along. I like their. I mean, you know, 
They have a great business model, obviously. <laughs> they certainly do. So I'm just asking the question because, you know, so we have to train teachers now and, and yeah. you know, all to stay with the APs, which we don't even know if they make a difference anyway. So that's just my, I'm just throwing it out there as a question. Board discussion. I, I don't know if this is quite correct, <laughs> but there's a lot of expertise down there. I think that it's not that uncommon that the AP or the College Board makes changes to AP exams or AP procedures that Regular. require some training periodically. This, it, I don't think it's... the prompt yeah. during of it. changes, but not usually for the very next school year. Right. This, this was unusual, I mean, but it's for next year. You know, well, they're under Surprise. a lot of pressure. I mean, if you read the paper, people are dropping them. People aren't always using the APs. Other school districts... No, I'm not saying in New Jersey, but in D.C., all the private schools stopped using It's them. private schools, though, that are able to do it. I know. I'm just saying. And the colleges. <laughs> and the colleges, right. They don't all. It's just a bigger conversation to be had yeah. regarding the usefulness of APs and why we are kowtowing to the college board. They got us over our SATs, too. Don't get me started. I, know. <laughs> I don't want to get in more trouble than I already have. <laughs> Sorry. I just couldn't. I just, you know, it, it bothers me. Any, I think Mike, Mike had a question. question. Yes, uh, the two items that uh, are listed, one is computer applications in business. Any the feel for what that. those are? Yes, the, um, well, the second one is nothing more than that the course approval form somehow got, it's something that gets signed at the meeting. It was actually signed and reported previously, and um, AP research has been talked about for. Uh, yeah, now, what is that? AP Research is a new course in which the student designs a research project. They're going to work. There's two staff members, or um, well, there's one English teacher, but they work with another staff member when they choose their topic. Okay, so depending on their topic, there'll be one or two teachers available to them to work with them on their research project. Oh, okay, and uh, and then computer applications in business. It, it's just a course name change. The, it used to be called word processing, which is just not really in line with today and um, in an effort for Michael's here. Right. Right. Oh, Karen, okay, sorry. I think they were going to focus on adding more Microsoft Right, it's going to be the Microsoft software Office suite. And it's basically like, because kids weren't signing up for it when they were thinking that it was just right. word processing. Right. But the reality is that it's the whole Microsoft Office suite. And the reason okay. for that is because college freshmen need all of those skills when for they business. get there. Perfect. And okay. um, they're, they're feeling a little behind the eight ball when right. they, they haven't had it in so high school. So it's like school. an upgrade to the class. Well, they have to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and there'll be a new textbook that goes with that. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, can we have a vote, a roll call? Mr. Byrne? Yes. Ms. Schaefer? Yes. Mrs. Gray? Yes. Mr. Salmon? Yes. Mrs. White? Yes. Mrs. Richmond? Yes. Mrs. Korn? Yes. Mrs. Woldridge? Yes. Mrs. McCune? Yes. Madam President? Thank you. Um, advocacy still hasn't met yet, right? Since we last have not time. met. We will be meeting on Monday, April 1st, um, and we will be starting at Oak Street, um, so we'll meet at 8.45. Okay. Um, okay, SEL. We're going to um, re redo that one yes. because of the bad sound yeah, I'm gonna Yeah, I'm going to repeat um, what I met, uh, <coughs> reported out last week because of the microphone debacle. <laughs> um, Last, the last quarter, um, the counseling teams at William Mammon and Ridge worked on committees to use the January 30th in-service day as, um, to create a staff wellness day for positive school climate culture. And together, several key stakeholders in the Basking Ridge community and the Somerset County worked with our staff to deliver the programming for that, that afternoon at those schools. Um, a survey went out and the feedback um, was very positive. Nearly 90% of the staff indicated the professional learning experience was a positive um, day for them. They, um, the, their primary request for that day was to learn mindfulness and meditation. So that was mainly the focus of the day. Um, the administration brought in Anna Major as a speaker, who was a former Ridge educator and mindfulness instructor for children. 
She opened the day at Ridge and closed the afternoon in service at William Annan. At Ridge, the day was about recharging your battery through mindfulness exercises. Um, and the staff was up and, up and out of their seats interacting with each other. And they discussed ways to fit mindfulness into their day. They also discussed ways of dealing with stressors on a daily and weekly basis. Um, three committees Three committees had formed as a result of the in-service day culture and climate committee, um, character ed committee, and the staff appreciation committee. And those um, committees are working um, as we, like within the, the, the Ridge um, environment now. 41 people volunteered to, to participate on these committees and keep the enthusiasm growing at, um, within the school and district. Teachers, um, Teacher leaders are framing the committees um, and building buy-in, and they're having meetings to brainstorm and create ownership of the programs to see where SEL and wellness concepts fit in and where there are overlaps. Um, currently, the staff is internalizing how to incorporate mindfulness into the classroom. In some classes, um, some of the do now activities are being replaced by mindfulness minutes or three-minute little sessions. Um, Mr. Syatt, observed this practice in action and the teachers, the teachers and the students were really, um, seemed to be taking to it and liking it. In terms of improvement, most of the comments were generally about logistics recommendations, like how to move um, around in the rotations and how to pick, which I think, I believe, I'm, I'm sort of guessing, um, pick how to pick their whatever, in. Um, yeah, like the offerings, whatever workshop things. They, I think they could schedule their day in a, what they wanted to participate in. Um, there, were, um, there are other groups that are meeting. Um, there's a, fre a freshman orientation group that's working um, closely with Mr. Krause. A Ridge Gives Back group um, and an infusing SEL into curriculum, PE, and health um, group that are all working under um, Mr. Uh, Krause's guidance. Community in Crisis is planning to come and talk. I don't know if they have or not, but they're coming to talk to the um, health department. Um, there is an upcoming curriculum forum this week on Wednesday, um, March 27th. That is Wednesday, right? Yeah. So, um, there's a Study Skills Parent Academy at William Mannon um, Media Center at 7 p.m. Um, I'm really hoping that people come to it because parents have asked us numerous times to provide study skills for their for their children, so um, and to talk talk about study skills to the parents. So I'm really really hoping that we get a good crowd that comes out to that. Um, with regard to parent academies, we we have been brainstorming different ways to bring the community um, in in together and PTO presidents to brainstorm how to get people to attend all of our programming um, outside of the outside of the normal, you know, curricular day. Um, on February 27th, there was a presentation that was great about um, distress or use stress. It was a parent academy program that was unfortunately very poorly attended, but the um, presentation is online, and Mr. Um, Markarian did send out an SOS uh, report with links to that and to the um, TED Talk by Kelly McGonigal um, about how to, how to make stress your friend. So hopefully people have a chance to look at it or look, look for it and um, take a look at it because it's real, it was really a powerful um, presentation. Um, in terms of a rotating drop schedule, Mr. Krause just um, gave us a brief update. He explained that several administrators, teachers, and students have um, visited four schools, two with rotating drop schedules and two with an A day, B day <coughs> um, schedule. And administ administration is in the process of um, getting that feedback and from the teachers and students, and they'll be giving us, I believe, next week is the presentation to the full board. Um, so we'll learn a lot more about what they have to say next week. <clears throat> Ms. Smith is looking at the K to 12 counseling program with a goal to align our counseling curriculum and programming with ASK a national model and attain ramp designation. Last month, we talked a lot about William Annan and elementary schools and what they're doing. <coughs> this month, or this meeting, we talked about Ridge and um, we talked a little bit about small groups and what they're doing. 
and how um, the counselors in SACS really would like to limit the students from missing class. So they're trying to figure out what works best for the students who need their services. And they're doing a needs assessment. The RAD students are coming to the next SAC department meeting to offer student input and to, you know, to voice their opinions on things. <coughs> One last thing, sorry. Um, the team, uh, we, we talked about student wellness programming and student focus groups at Ridge. <coughs> the team is going to be um, looking to put some health and wellness focus groups together and they're determining what that will look like. They would like to get a good cross section of students. So they're considering pulling students randomly during lunch periods to participate in some quick focus groups. They're randomly selecting students to hear their thoughts. Um, they're using data from the end of um, class surveys, which we've often heard them as being referred to as exit surveys. And they're considering what supplemental topics make the most sense for the Friday for programming going forward. And administration is considering potential options for parent input as well. And our next meeting is Thursday morning at 8. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you. Um, we're up to liaison committee reports. I don't know if anybody has one. No? Okay, so now we're up to public comment on non-agenda items. If you do come up for public comment, could you please um, sign in after you speak and tell us your name and address when you come up to the microphone. Thank you. Hello, it's Elaine D'Addario, 46 Dykeman Place in Masking Ridge, New Jersey. Just a few things. Um, I just wanted to express, um, I went to a, the recent Ridge High School PTO presentation that was on tips for parenting, helping your team develop healthy coping skills. There were about 50 people here. One woman caught my attention in the district when she said that her daughter was in WAM, seventh grade, new health curriculum about anxiety and depression. And the districts, um, and, in, and she was saying that she was see, seeing, oh, about it, the whole curriculum was about uh, see something, say something. And she expressed how it became a burden to her child. It was challenging the 12-year-olds um, who really don't even know what's going on in their own lives. The parent felt that the discussion an infusion of these topics into the students put too much emphasis on the dark side. This is what I was writing as she was saying it. I was pretty impressed that she spoke out in the room of 50 people about this, and I just wanted to give you that feedback. She said it sounds like uh, there was a rebound effect, and I took note, and I was hoping that the administration and Board of Ed meeting members um, could think about that when they were creating the uh, curriculum topics for the high school, um, because she was mentioning how her daughter and her friend, the friend was now feeling more anxiety and more stressed out because it was a topic they were discussing. So she was kind of looking for it in her own life and stressing about it. And so then this, this woman's daughter was now seeing her daughter because the um, educator was saying, you need to then help your peers, was now stressed out about how to help her peer. So just some feedback that I heard, wrote it down and thought you might want to you know, think about also, um, especially with that, I don't know if you're gonna do a survey on that level or not, but something to think about. Um, also, uh, the recent juniors assembly that happened uh, with a local alcoholic or a rehabilitated alcoholic that spoke, I got texts and calls from so many people on that and how you hit a home run with that. I think you're adding the assemblies is really a good thing um, that, I wish we had been doing sooner than this, but the juniors were impacted. Juniors that typically don't talk to their parents went home and unloaded all of this stuff that really uh, they took out of that. Seeing somebody that went to Ridge High School who had gone through all of this, it really hit home for them. So I think that you're on a good path with those assemblies. I know you'll have different ones. And then I was texted um, by somebody today, and I just wanted to propose this to all of you, and it is uh, the if I can read it here, Berkeley Heights Public School from their Board of Education. They have a snow day give back days and I'm just gonna read it to you and hopefully you'll consider it. At the Board of Ed meeting on March 14th, the following resolution was approved. 
a revision of the 2018-19 school district calendar, establishing Monday, April 22nd, Friday, May 24th, and Tuesday, May 28th, 2019, as days on which all district schools will be closed. School will be closed on all of the aforementioned days, dates, only if there are no additional emergency closing days in the district during the 2018-19 school year. In the event that one more emergency closing day is used, school will be closed on April 22nd. If two more emergency days are needed, school will be open on April 22nd and May 28th. Now, I know they're planning for who knows whatever comes up, but if our neighboring district of Berkeley Heights can consider this, then I'm hoping that our Board of Ed can too. Thank you for listening. Stella Perna, 105 Tuxford Terrace. I promise I won't talk about SEL tonight. I still don't like it, um, but I'll get back to you on that. I saw uh, Mr. Markarian's, uh, actually it wasn't Mr. Yeah, it was Mr. Markarian's SOS, but it was a letter from Hank Warner, our Director of School Security and Safety. And it sounds like we're rolling out the WeTip um, app to our students this week. Um, as you, some of you may know, I had done some extensive research and offered a solution uh, to Community in Crisis and Municipal Alliance regarding a, an app that our students could use to report any uh, bullying or um, some safety issue or whatever. And I had identified two different apps, um, neither of which were WeTip, but I understand WeTip and Stop It merged back in June of 2018, which sort of co coincided when, when the presentations were given over at Community in Crisis. Um, two questions. Um, what was the criteria used to select WeTip? Because when I looked at it, um, the first screen said, um, is this event happening within the next 24 hours? If so, call this 1-800 number. Um, and so that's what happens. You have to call 1-800 number. And then the question is, yes or no, um, is this a school incident? And if it's a yes, then it takes you to another screen and it asks you, what school you go to, what's the address, um, who is the person. It's just a lot of filling out. When kids are reporting, they're not sitting there filling out forms. The beauty of Stop It, which by the way is free for Somerset County residents and anyone can download it, it's one button, it says report. When you hit report, the next screen that comes up says, what's the nature of your report and do you wanna take a picture or send a video? And it's, it's very simple. Um, for Somerset County residents, it's free. Um, so I'd just like to understand how that decision was made. I just feel that the weed tip may not be effective uh, just because kids just don't use phones. I know my kids don't. I can't ever get a hold of them. They've got cell phones and I can never want reach to so um, give that just feedback. Thank you. Is there anyone else for public comment? No, okay, at this point, we'll close public comment. <clears throat> um, so with respect to the process to take a look at these reporting systems for students, uh, we actually did that through the um, district safety team. So we got together as a group and uh, different presenters uh, for different providers, I'm not going to name names, did, did um, sort of a sales pitch and demo. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, we looked at three different uh, providers and chose WeTip, I think largely uh, because some of the others are actually not free to our district. I know that um, there, are, uh, uh, there is a county system uh, with a slightly different purpose from what I could gather than to report school level issues. Um, so the system that we put forth to at least try this spring uh, was WeTip and it is free to us. In addition, um, the school safety team members seem to 
like the idea that there is a, at least an opportunity to have a conversation with a person uh, rather than strictly uh, doing something electronic uh, in submitting um, through the app. So I, I do know that there, I have heard in, in conversations with WeTip that uh, there may be some connection with Stop It. I haven't seen exactly that in action. Um, so I, I don't know about the June 2018 uh, agreement. I know that there was discussion. I don't know that uh, it was formalized at this point, but uh, that was the rationale. It really came as a decision from the uh, district school safety team. Okay, we're up to board forum. Does anyone have anything for board forum? I just want to say thank you to, to whoever got our microphones to work. It's, it's so much better. I can, I can actually hear up here, which is like huge. <laughs> so thank you. For yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> obviously the setup that we're able to have here at uh, the PAC, and so we're fortunate to be able to get here to the setup as much as possible um, because we have a, a pack manager uh, and a technician that, that are here really doing a nice job with our facility here. Unfortunately, when we're the traveling Travel. road show, it's a little tougher to, to keep up with equipment that works when it's being transported. It kind of takes a beating, which doesn't mean that we shouldn't try to get something else, but we'll see about that. <laughs> we keep buying it, it keeps breaking. It doesn't travel well. This stuff does not travel well, so sorry about that. Anything else? Yeah, go ahead. I, I actually have a question for Kristen, if you don't mind, or clarification. So the public comment about the junior assembly, uh, you know, this old timer, I was under the impression that we always did something with substance abusers and addicts at the junior, so this is not new, it's just they bring in different individuals. Yeah. So, well, the, I, the reason I mention is because I just want the public to be aware that this is a long-standing um, assembly targeted at the junior class, which has huge impacts, huge impacts. All of my three older kids felt the same way about it as my current junior did. And, um, and it's, it's a great thing to do and you have them totally captive. You, you, they're not looking at their phones and they're not, you know, they're, they're engaged the whole time. Anything else for board forum? No? Okay, we're up to adjournment. Would someone like to make a motion? <coughs> Mrs. Woldridge. <laughs> Mr. Salmon, second. All in I favor? Give you a call. Yes. Okay. It, uh, no fever or anything, but call. <laughs>